Greetings, everybody. Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about a very expensive DAC. It's a streaming DAC, and it sells for almost ten thousand euros. So I'm telling you this up front because if you're the kind of person who just thinks I'm never going to spend that kind of money on a DAC, you can stop watching this video now and go out for a walk, have a cup of tea,、um, talk to your family. So listen to any DAC, like the best DAC that you have. Very often, it's hard to imagine how things could possibly be better than this. You sit back and you just go, "This sounds amazing. I can't imagine how anything could be better than this." Until you move up to the next level, and then you go through the same process again. So really, this is where experience matters. Direct experience with a product. Determines, <laughs> I guess, how you might feel about its performance, and this is the sort of process I've been through with a streaming DAC from Mola Mola in the last. Actually, I've had this thing for about twelve weeks. It's a Kallax Fi streaming DAC called the Tambaki, and on the back panel we have Spidef Coax, Spidef Toslink. USB and HDMI I squared S. So if you want to add like an external streamer CD player, you can do that. But I've really been only listening to this DAC using its streaming input. That's Ethernet. There's no Wi-Fi, and it's just room ready. There's no Spotify Connect. There's no UPnP that I can tell. Just room ready, and that's how I've been using this device. On the front panel, four buttons. For each of the inputs, but there's no volume control. So how do we control the volume of this streaming DAC? It's quite an unusual solution, actually. Mola Mola give us an app which connects to the DAC via Bluetooth, and then we can use a volume slider there. Now with Rune, though, we can use Rune's own in-app volume slider, which I find much more convenient. Not that the the Mola Mola app is bad per se, but it's quite basic. It runs quickly. So I have no quibbles with it, really, but it's just yeah, it's not very sophisticated. It just gets the job done. And that app isn't as sophisticated as the app that comes with the DCS Bartok, which I have here as well. And we'll talk more about the Bartok in a bit. But DCS's Mosaic app, I think, is a bit slicker. It's more accomplished. There's, there's a lot more going on inside. So if you're a tweaker, you're really going to get off on the Mosaic app far more so than the one that comes with the Mola Mola Tambaki. So you should know about that. Also, the DCS does Spotify Connect, UPnP, that kind of thing. And the DCS Bartok is a much larger piece of hardware. It's more expensive as well. I mean, I think it, the price just went up to, a, I think, with the streamer, the headphone amp, and the DAC, it's nudging fifteen thousand pounds or fourteen and a half, I think. But it feels more substantial, whereas the the Tambaki is a More slimline piece, but it has the advantage of being Kallax fi, so you can put it inside a Kallax unit. Can't do that with a DCS. Can do that with the Mola Mola. Neither of these two DACs 
contains off the shelf DAC chips from say ESS or Wolfson or TI or whoever. The DCS has got their ring technology inside so that's their own DAC system and the Mola Mola is also very different. It has a, a DSP chip inside that handles the DA conversion and that was coded by Bruno Putzes, who we spoke to on the Darko Audio podcast very recently. Both the Bartok and the Tambaki have headphone circuitry built in. Now, putting the Tambaki on a bit of a back foot from the outset, uh, its headphone outputs are on the back panel. There's a 6.4 millimeter and a balanced XLR connector, but they're on the back, which doesn't make them as convenient as the front panel Bartok. If you ask me which one I prefer just in a headphone context, I would give the nod to the Bartok. It just has a bit more meat, a bit more substance than does the Tambaki. And then the Bartok sort of really pulls further ahead with its new crossfeed feature, which is currently in beta. This is again one of those situations where once you've heard it, it's hard to go back. Um, because what the crossfeed does is create more of a center image with the headphones on. And I cannot listen to the Bartok now without that engaged. It's that good. And the Tambaki doesn't have that crossfeed feature as far as I can tell. So really, yeah, in, in terms of just as a headphone solution, even though the Bartok is more expensive, it gets the nod here. But the interesting thing is, is that the price differential between the two, with the savings you make in going with the Tambaki, you could afford to buy a very, very, very high-end dedicated headphone amplifier. So that's worth bearing in mind, especially as we move on to talk about the Tambaki and the Bartok in the context of being a, a, just a, a streaming DAC in a hi-fi loudspeaker system. And if you can hear that whining noise, it's my air conditioner. It's 35 degrees today as we're filming outside. We have to have all the windows closed because of noise and the air con is a must, so I'm sorry about that. <laughs> So for the past three weeks, I've been comparing the DCS Bartok as a standalone DAC to the Mola Mola Tambaki as a standalone DAC. And for that, for these kind of high-end DACs, we need a relatively high-end loudspeaker system. I'm not concentrating on headphones in this video, it's mainly loudspeaker listening. So I've started with my JBL L100 Classics that you can see behind me, and they are wired into the MyTech Brooklyn amp, which is also just on the bench behind me, with AudioQuest Rocket 88 cable, and then AudioQuest balance cables back to a PS Audio BHK preamplifier. And then the Bartok and the Mola Mola are both connected, balanced with the same type of XLR cable into that preamp. Now to level match the outputs, I had to pull up the, uh, the Mola Mola app and drop the XLR output from six volts to two. So that when I'm actually flipping between the inputs on the preamp, I get the same volume. So I had, well, initially, actually, I thought I had the, uh, the Bartok on input five and the Mola Mola on input three. But I got them wrong because I was using it so often, I kind of flipped it around. So I took all these notes and then I had to really invert all of my thinking um, in the final week when I realized my mistake. So it was kind of <laughs> ended up almost being a little bit of a blind, I don't want to call it a blind test, but like a, a dumbass blind test maybe. But let's talk a little bit first about the Tambaki sound and the things that really impressed me because it's one hell of an impressive DAC. I mean, I know we're kind of into really high-end territory here and that's what we'd expect, but yeah, it's, it's super impressive. Now, people like to talk about inky black backgrounds. Now, I just can't relate to that because it, it, it just implies there isn't enough light. I mean, when, when it, things are inky black, light doesn't really get a look in, nothing gets reflected. And I, for me, when I was listening to this Robin Hitchcock Greatest Hits compilation, and I was listening to the track Ride, which is very expansive, good guitar, 
80s production, not overdone. I think it was done by Paul Fox. Anyway, it was really nice. Um, but what I noticed from the Tambaki is it just shines just so much light into the mix. So you can hear all it, you know, into the corners of where little sounds pop out. Like it's just, I guess it's overall gestalt, 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 might be one of deep illumination. So if we wanted one of John's special metaphors for this, it's a bit like, you know, when you wake up on a spring morning and you open the curtains and it just throws light on everything. Or in the evening where you, you know, you get these sort of shafts of low light and you can see the dust specks sort of floating around in those lights. The tambaki is a bit like that with the detail. It goes very deep, but it makes everything look really quite beautiful. And more detail like that means a better sense of music's nuance, its separation, and especially in the top end, finesse. You know, that sort of filigreed feel. I think this is where high-end DACs really make themselves known compared to more affordable DACs. It's in the top end that doesn't sound as rigid or as uptight, it just sounds more easeful and relaxed. So this is a DAC with amazing detail but without the associated you know, nervousness, that tension that sometimes people complain about at the entry level, sometimes. Another couple of standout qualities with this Tambaki DAC are the way it inks tonal colours. So I noticed this on the Future Sound of London's Life Forms EP, not the album, the EP, which has lots of watery sounds and Liz Fraser's voice is all over it. Um, it just inks them really nicely. The colour of music is more obvious, so it's less sort of pastels or chalk and more crayoned. And then I was listening to um, a high res 2496 version of Live Rust by Neil Young and Crazy Horse. This is a late 70s live album. Many people think it's his best. I think Weld is probably better. But anyway, so I was listening to Cortez the Killer. And one thing that the Tambaki teases out really nicely is the texture on Neil Young's guitar playing, especially the sort of the extra frippery that kicks in about the six minute mark. It's really, really cool. So if I had to describe this DAC with just two words, I would say it is effortlessly analytical. Now I have to emphasize the effortlessly because many people associate analytical with like cold and sterile and this is absolutely not the case. This is a DAC of the highest caliber, as well we'd expect for 10,000 euros. Lastly, I think one other quality that a really high-end DAC can bring to the rest of the system, especially the speakers, is an ability to seemingly detach the music from the speaker. So with these JBLs, I was, kind of, I was listening and noticing how much the imaging had improved with the Tambaki. Now that's not just the precise player placement, but just the music just seems to float in front of the speakers. Like it's not anything to do with the speakers. And that surprised me actually, because I didn't really expect that to come from a DAC. Um, the DCS does it as well. Um, and I don't really notice this as much from other DACs that I have here, so less expensive DACs. Um, so, Know that when you're spending this kind of money, you do not only get more detail, but just, yeah, this sort of better separation between music and loudspeaker. And I thought that was really interesting. But this is the limitation of videos like this, is that unless you've heard it, it's impossible to imagine. So I'm just relaying my experiences here. Now, in comparing the Tambaki in this loudspeaker system to the DCS Bartok, 
I didn't kind of go input three, input five, input three very quickly during you know one or two days. I mean, that's what you might do in a hi-fi store. That did you know tell me some things, but it was only from just really from weeks of listening, so from going input five for like two days, then input three for two days. That's how I teased out some of the differences between these two high-end DACs. Now, even though they offer similar levels of detail retrieval, the Tambaki seems to sort of open things up more. So the Bartok is a little bit more, I guess it, it allows you to drop your head. It kind of, it lowers our sort of center of gravity of the, the musical image. And it's a little bit more focused in the middle than the Tambaki, which pushes forward a little bit more treble information, a little bit more presence region info, and we get more air around the instruments. I mean, that's such a cliche, isn't it? But we do. With the Tambaki, we get more air around instruments and the more recording space information than we get from the Bartok. And I was actually quite stunned by that, that finding, given that the Tambaki is you know, probably two thirds the price of the Bartok now. I was listening to some silent servant techno. And one thing that I find techno is very good for is determining soundstage width and height because it's pretty constant. And this silent servant, I don't remember the EP actually, it, it showed me that the Tambaki went a bit wider than the Bartok. I mean, that's, I guess that's connected to what I said before about the Bartok being a bit more focused in the middle. The Tambaki definitely widens things out a bit more, <laughs> a bit more. <laughs> When I was playing some Luna, what was the album? Penthouse. I was playing Luna's Penthouse from the 90s. Luna is the band that sort of came out of the ashes of Galaxy 500 with Dean Wareham at the front. Um, and Penthouse is a fantastic album. I think it's got Tom Verlaine on one track. Anyway, it's very good. It's like American indie rock, lots of strumming acoustic guitars, very melodic, pretty easy to listen to. And that told me or that showed me that the Bartok is more of a smoother, more sort of mellow DAC than the, tem than, than the Tambaki. Whereas the Mola Mola has a bit more jump factor, a bit more microdynamic excitement, opens things up a bit. So you have to decide which one of those sort of main qualities sounds best for you. Because I could listen to either Actually, no I, no, I do prefer the Mola Mola when it opens up Luna like that. But I guess if a lot of it, how you would feel about that would depend upon the hardware you have. So I'm really talking about this system here. So if your system was already very open and already gave you a lot of air and you didn't need any more and you think that the Tambaki might overdo it, then the, the Bartok might be the better choice. So you have to think about the electronics and the speakers you're gonna put these DACs into in deciding which one to go for. In summary, I think the Tambaki differentiates itself from the Bartok with more rhythmic charge and a little bit more microdynamic excitement and a bit more clarity. And I hate to say it, and this was again very surprising, but I think the Mola Mola contrasts the DCS as a little bit veiled. I know Bartok owners are gonna be appalled by me saying this, but this is my finding with this system and these other electronics and cables and whatnot. So I guess, yeah, unless you've experienced it for yourself, you can't possibly know. So in terms of value, the Mola Mola is 10 grand, the DCS is 15. Undoubtedly, the Tambaki offers us the greatest value for money. There's no question about that. Um, as I said earlier, if you want the best, most engaging headphone output, you should go for the DCS because I think that's where it, it really shines, especially with crossfeed. The Tambaki for me is more of a DAC with the, the added bonus of headphone listening. Um, I think it's the better choice if you just want the DAC. If you just want the high-end DAC and you want the better sounding of the two, 
better sounding, better in terms of clarity and excitement, then the Tambaki is absolutely the one you should go for. And you'll save five grand. And if you go for the Tambaki and you're saving five grand, you can either pocket that money, use it to buy some CDs and an extra CD player to feed the Tambaki over I squared S. I think the PS Audio, yes, the PS Audio that I have here, that does do that. Does it sound better than Rune? Actually, yes, it does a little bit, just a tiny bit. So CDs into the Tambaki, for me, just nudge out its uh, Rune streaming input. So yeah, I don't think that's all I have to say about this very wonderful DAC from Mola Mola. <laughs>is no doubting that the Mola Mola Tambaki at 10 grand is a very, very expensive DAC. And in fact, I think, judging by what I've seen at audio shows over the years, the speakers and the amplifier that I'm using here are probably not really high-end enough for your typical Mola Mola Tambaki owner. I think a lot of people would be having 50 grand speakers, 20 grand amplifiers, and then dropping the Tambaki into that kind of system, but I don't have that kind of gear. But I still hear the differences. I mean, it's still very apparent to me. Now, a lot of people w might question, why would one spend 10 grand on a DAC? That's crazy money. But as I've said many times before, your relationship to expensive hi-fi gear also depends upon your relationship to money. So if you're only pulling 50 grand a year, of course you're not gonna buy this thing. But if you're pulling half a million, you'd happily buy this thing if you're in the market for that kind of DAC. So it's a matter of priorities as well as it is money because I don't own a car, as I've said before in the DCS video, and that frees me up from 10 grand to spend it on gear like this. And I really think is if, if you're the kind of person that grumbles about a 10 grand DAC, but you've got a laptop, an iPad, an iPhone, maybe a backup phone, um, a very expensive television, you would have spent 10 grand on those things easily. It's just that your priorities are different and that's okay. But then if you kind of come around and start grumbling about why would anybody spend 10 grand on a DAC, you might wanna look at your own levels of consumption elsewhere and maybe just consider it could be just priorities for you. Because there are plenty of people out there who would buy this product, the Mola Mola or the DCS, no problem. And I think these are, they do earn their price premium. I mean, these are two of the best DACs that I've ever heard, especially the Mola Mola, actually. I think it really is an outstanding piece of gear and it offers a substantial jump over more affordable DACs. But unless you've heard that, you wouldn't know it. Anyway. If you like this video, if you're the kind of person who's into high-end DAX, please give us a like down below. I'm not going to talk too often about DAX at this price point. Do one, maybe two every year, maybe. So if you're okay with that, subscribe to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching. But there, oh f I forgot the name of the app. <laughs> Now both of them are Now both of them have a head Blah. Why am I saying why am I talking like that? So in summary, the Tambac no, I mean let's do this again. And also as I said earlier, you can use that five grand to you know buy a better headphone output, a really, really good one. Output? Ah, let me do that bit again. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.